Shreveport guy, Louisiana State Senator John Milkovich is here. Hey, Mr. John, how are you today? Hey, Robert, and I'm sure Aaron's with you. How are y'all doing today? We're good. Thanks, John. want to start off with the letter that you and 13 other senators, including Greg Tarver, have sent to Governor John Bell Edwards. Uh, I think the term that you... Wait, 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 wait a minute. I don't think I signed that letter. Someone may put my name on it. I didn't sign that letter. I didn't really? Letter Somebody put your in name. the top right corner, it says Senator John Milkovich, District 38. It's coming from the Senate Regina Democratic Barrow, Caucus. Wesley Ship, Gerald Boudreaux, Troy Carter, John Milkovich. Uh, okay, let, let, me, let me make one thing clear. Number one, I haven't seen the letter. Number two, I did not sign it. So I'm glad you brought that to so my So did they just That's put your name, pardon me, John, they just put your name at the top of this letter with Tarver and Barrow and all these others um, w- without your knowledge and or permission? Uh, I was asked about a week ago to look at a letter to sign it. Excuse me. And I never had a chance to look at it, and I did not sign it. It's calling and- for uh, income tax increases for the middle class. D- is that okay. something you're... Okay, well, I'm- thank you for telling me that. I want you to fax that letter to my office right now, uh, and in fact, I'll give you my... Um, Don't have to. I can text it to you in a couple of seconds. Well, and I'm not that adept on the phone. <laughs> I did not, absolutely did not sign that letter. Do you that agree with Do you off. agree with adjusting no, our income I taxes? Not. I absolutely do not. That's the whole reason, it's one of the primary reasons that we're here. Listen. I'm a little bit mad about this. I guess I need to have some conversations. Okay, my, my, I guess my, my, my first question now is going to be, as soon as you get off the phone, who are you going to yell at? Well, I'm going to talk, uh, fax it to me, and then I'm going to have a better idea who I'm going to yell at. It's at. it's signed by uh, Senator Troy Carter, chairman of the Senate Democratic Caucus. Well, okay, he, yeah. Listen, if he signed that, that's his name. My name is not on the letter. I haven't read it. And I, it's hard for me to talk uh, intelligently about a letter that I haven't seen. So you were, you were, pardon me again, you were totally, you had no idea, no knowledge of this letter that was sent to John Bell. With well, your... no, let, let me be very clear. I was asked to look at a letter and sign a letter. I, but I, but I, I've been very busy in my district office in my law practice. And I told, I told a, a member of the caucus, look, I haven't read it. And I haven't, I'm not going to, you know, obviously I'm not going to sign something I haven't read. Let's and talk about what it says. Compressing income tax brackets. 6% rate effective at 30000 for single, 60000 for joint. Reduces excess itemized deductions to 50%. Listen, I, I'm against that. I'm absolutely against that. And, and I think you, you are helping me out. You said he signed it. I did not sign that. Well, letter. they have your name imprinted well, on the okay. top right. Okay, well, I did not sign that letter. I did not read it, and I don't agree with it. And I'll tell you so, exactly so you, why. So you didn't know. You, when, when I'm telling you this right now, when I say, Mr. John. No, they you're... told me about that they had a letter that they wanted me to look at and sign, but I never actually got around to looking at it. I, I'm busy. I've got a lot of work to do in my district, well, what and do, I did not sign it. What do you look for as a compromise to solve our fiscal crisis? Well, listen, uh, this, if we want to cut taxes, we need to cut spending. And uh, where I believe we need to go is, and I'm even more fired up about it now. Thank you for telling me about this. By the way, I don't need coffee now today after you <laughs> tell me about this on air. Listen. Probably a reduce, Xanax, we, too, I would yeah. think. Yeah. Well, we're, we're, I'm not going there. Uh, we're, we need to cut spending. We need to reduce government. We need to get rid of uh, government waste. And we need to make the government more efficient. Everybody also, says that, John. And, but when are we going to do well, it? Let, let me ask you this, John. We well, had go, we, we, how about how about this? How about 2018? Listen, there are people in Baton Rouge that say, you know, it's the governor's job to propose cuts. The legislators won't do it. I I have a constitutional obligation as a legislator. Number one, to propose specific cuts. Number two, to help do my part to help balance the budget. In when, 2017. I was possibly the only member of the Senate or one of very few that voted against the budget three times. You guys know that. Mm-hmm. I was in your, your studio. I was one of, I think, two senators, uh, along with Senator Peacock, and there may have been a few more. I voted against using rainy day funds or the state savings account to try to get us through because I thought, hey, we need to cut spending. We don't need to be using up our savings account. And the other thing is let's get to the point of proposing 
specific spending cuts, which in Baton Rouge for two years they say, well, we don't want to suggest specific cuts. We did. In 2017, I went to the floor. I said, we need to cut. I believe I proposed a $30 million cut to the Department of Education because that's a, a statewide bureaucracy. That's not dollars in the classroom. That's not even MFP. That's a huge Baton Rouge bureaucracy. I said, let's cut them $30 million. I got one vote in the Senate, along with mine, my roommate, Senator Gaddy, also voted to trim their sales by $30 million. We, we had... also had a legislative auditor's report that said LSU had $930 million in the bank. Don't get me wrong. I love LSU. Go Tigers on the team. However, at LSU had more money in the bank than the state of Louisiana. We had... I think $360 million in savings, LSU had $930 million. I said, well, let's give them $30 million left. Guess how many votes I got on that? One vote, my own. So where are we in 2018? Somebody needs to step up to the plate instead of saying, well, we need to cut spending and cut savings or uh, taxes, but I have no ideas. We have some ideas. John, pardon I me. We had DOE. we had Governor Edwards on last hour, and he is sticking to, with all his might, yes, I cut $600 million from the budget. Well, did, and, and, did the governor really cut $600 million? Well, I think some of those, and I don't know the exact math, but, but a couple things about that. I think some of them were one-time savings. That's great. Some of them are annualized. That's greater. But the point... You know, this isn't, for me, about blame game or finger pointing. This is about step up to the plate, cowboy up, and take some responsibility. These are some suggestions. I think we need to cut the State Department of Bureaucracy slash Education by $50 million. I intend to propose legislation to do that. The teachers are ticked off about the red tape, the fine print, the, the game plan that goes on in Baton Rouge with John White. They're sick of it. I've been hearing about it for years. Well, that they're not... Uh, the, they have a budget of 1.6 billion dollars. You can't, you can't, you know, you you can't, you know, you think these people can't be cut millions of dollars? Another area, nursing homes. I think our seniors need to be living in their own homes, and I think we need to take a hard look to see if we can save money by allowing seniors to live in their own homes with in-home support, rather than uh, spending more money to nursing homes, teachers' retirement. How much did the uh, teachers, uh, the people that manage the teachers' retirement account, how much did they get paid last year? That's the question, y'all. Do y'all know the answer to that question? No. Try this. $100 million paid out of the, t- out of the teachers' retirement fund to the fund managers for one year. Hmm. I think we, there's some sales that need to be tra- trimmed here. John, we, story, we're, we're up against our clock here, but can we do this again next week? Let's do it again next week. And hang on, and Matt will get your email, and I'll send you the letter right away. And I want to see that letter. I'm a little, but anyway, thank but, you for calling me. I don't need, I do not need coffee this morning after five. <laughs> thank you, thank you, John. Good luck today on your first big day down there. Let's go. Let's get it.